So hello and welcome to the Cordon YouTube channel. Today you join me on the banks of the beautiful River Ribble and we're in search of silvers on the stick float. And that is what the mighty River Ribble is all about. Quality fish like roach and dace and perch. And hopefully there'll be plenty more of them to come in the video. But that sums up the River Ribble and a lovely start to the day. And during the course of today's video, what I'll do is I'll share all the hints and tips that I do when I'm approaching a river like this. And hopefully you can put into your fishing to go out on the bank and get a few bites. And that is a stunning perch. And the one thing that I do love about rivers are the colours of the fish in them. So in the early stages of the session, I'm not too concerned about getting bites. It's great confidence that we are, but at the start of the video, I'm all about attracting fish into the area and setting up them columns of bait. And that is something that we'll talk about in a minute because that is the key to getting plenty of bites. But to begin with, it's all about just attracting fish into your area. It's a big river. And what we're doing at the start, we're just making a statement to say we're here and get that bait going in. But to get fish at the start is just a bonus. So one question that I do get a lot is about people struggling moving from the smaller rivers over to these bigger rivers. And the way I think about the river is like a motorway. I split the river into lanes. So you've got the fast lane, the middle lane, the inside lane, and the hard shoulder. And today, when I come to the river, I think about what area of the river I'm gonna target. Now this river here is a perfect example because we've got fast water on the outside, but on the inside of a bend. So the flow does actually match a motorway. What we're trying to do at the start is try and attract them fish into our lane. Now, in the mindset, I'm concentrating today on the inside lane, the slow lane, and the first lane. It's a big, huge river, but if you split it down into them lanes, all I'm looking at are them inside two lanes today, and you can forget the rest of the river that's out there. If you keep that mindset, it's not as daunting. And when people ask me that question about moving from big rivers to small, that's how I always explain it because then it breaks down the river into that little bit of river that you're fishing. What we're trying to do at the start is attract fish into our lane. And the only way you can do that is with bait. So we're putting plenty of hemp in, plenty of maggot, but we're trying to create that column of bait. Again, thinking about the motorway, we've got a fish there. Thinking about the motorway scenario, I pretend that I'm stood on a junction of a motorway. And when you go up the motorway, you see all the cars in every lane, don't you? I'm stood on that junction, trying to attract them cars into my lane. As you can see here, there's one or two fish coming into our lane. And that is how I always break it down. Break the river down into sections. And then from there, break the area that you're fishing down and create that column of bait. And these fish are now just on that column of bait. And it's been a great start with some good quality roach and perch. So the River Ribble is a very fertile river. There's a lot of fish in it and you've got to put plenty of food in to attract them in. The wind's played a bit of havoc today with us, but what we're trying to do at the start is just to make that line of bait going through the swim. That column of bait starting here, we're right behind it and we're following it through the swim. The aim today is obviously to get these fish a bit closer to us. In this wind, the closer we can get the fish to us, the more control we're going to have over that float and the easier they are to catch. 
But at the start, it's about making that statement and just keep putting that bait in. We're putting balls of ground bait in the swim, hemp, maggot in front of us, and just beginning to attract one or two fish into the swim. But at the start, it's all about setting up them columns of bait. There we go. That's another one. So when we started off today, it took us probably half an hour to get a bite. But confidence in your fishing and confidence that they'll turn up is key. Half, half an hour into the session and we're getting plenty of bites now. And that's all come from setting up that column of bait, being aggressive with a feeding and keeping on putting that food in. Feeding the maggots in front of us. And at the start, we're just gonna double feed just to get them fish in. And always keeping the bait in front of us. Again, if you think you stood on that junction of the motorway, them cars are coming up to you. If they were above you, they'd be very hard to stop, wouldn't they? The last thing you want is the fish coming above you in the water. You want all the fish below you in that column. That ground bait's gonna keep them down there, but always feed your maggots in front of you if you can. There are scenarios where you have to feed upstream, but with dace especially, you run the risk of them coming upstream on you which you don't want. If the days suddenly come up here, they're very hard to catch. So when we feed, it's always downstream, over a bit of an area. Like I say, you don't want all the fish in one lane. You want them spread over a couple, so you can pick them off. But it's all about that column of bait going through the river. And just holding that float back, slowing it down. These floats are perfect for doing that. They've got a good shoulder on them, but a sensitive tip, so you can really hold back against the flow. These fish at the moment are just holding down the swim and that is normal really they will start getting bites all the way through but hopefully during the morning we'll begin to draw them up in the swim and we'll get them a bit closer but at the start it's just all about getting bites So the rod that we're using today is the glide rod in 12 to 14 foot and we have got it in the 14 foot version today the reason why i've chose this rod is looking at the conditions with that extra color i knew there was every chance we could get these fish right close in and some quality as well what this rod allows me to do in 14 foot is get right behind that float it's got the finesse in the tip to hit them light bites from them roach and them days but it's also got the power to swing them fish to hand. And when you're trying to put together a nice net of fish, swinging them fish in and not netting them dramatically saves the time that it takes to land the fish and get back in the water. I've teamed that up with a switch reel and on there I've got four pound, four ounce line. And this line I've used in all my fishing on the river, nice and robust, but the property that I really like about it 
is how easy it lifts off the water. You can really lift and mend your line really easily and get right behind that float. Moving down to the float, we're using a 1.6 gram fine liner float. And I love using these for my stick float fishing. They've got a nice fine tip. And the property that I really like is the thick shoulder that it's got. It allows me to slow that bait right down going through the swim and just edge it through. And you can really slow that bait down in the flow, which is what them quality fish really want. Going through at half pace, yeah, it's one property of the float that I really like. The final property that I like on the float is how quickly it resets with the graphite stem. When that bait's going through the water and you hold back, the float will come like that. And as you let go, it falls, but it dips right down to that tip really quickly. So you can hit those shy biting bites as you let it go. But yeah, a float that I wouldn't be without in my fishing and one that I really like using. The shotting pattern that we've gone with today is a reverse taper. By that, I mean I've got one number four shot near the hook link, then two, then three, then four. What that allows you to do is when you hold back, it's a more natural fall of the bait. So you hold back, that bait will flutter up off the bottom, and as you let go, you get a more natural fall. All them shots are in the bottom third of the rig, so you get a much natural presentation. On the line there, we've got one of the quick chain swivels onto the hook link, and that's a two pound hook link down to a size 16 maggot hook. When you're catching them fish really quickly, you can fish a double maggot, a single maggot, but you can unhook the fish really quickly. And it's a nice strong hook if we do bump into some of them quality perch that are in the river and chub. That's the setup that I'm using today, and that's caught all the fish you've seen on screen. So we just talked about the flow and the rod and you can see there just swinging dace like that to hand. It's all about speed when you're putting together a good net and but that flow and being able to hold back with that shotting pattern just makes that bait flutter up in the water and it's a bite of chalk. But that is a quality river ribble dace. So dace are my favourite species of all and one thing that you can really do with dace is manipulate them as in get them to come where you want them to be in the swim. We've got the clarity today to draw this show right in. And what we're going to do is just put the bait in over the top and follow that column of bait. But for the last 15 minutes we've probably got this show just off the rod tip now just holding back and going over that bait. And now we've got the show right close in, you can get a bite of chuck right underneath the rod tip. The clarity in the water is allowing us to do that today because the fish feel comfortable coming that close in. If the water was clear, we'd have to go further out, but it's all about knowing your river and knowing the conditions. And today, coming to the river, we knew it had a bit of water in and it had the color in it as well that we could get a few bites.
So that is what the River Ribble is all about. Dog days. And at this time of year, they're moving into this area to breed. And not got the rough edges yet to them, but they soon will have. But that is a proper herring of a days. And what the River Ribble is all about. So as you can see, the conditions have really changed now and the wind's really got up. It is a slightly upstream wind, which is good. But the fact that we've got these fish where we want them is really good. So we can go right off the rod tip, pull it into that line of bait. It'd be very hard today if we were fishing further out to get that control, you know, on a bolo or a waggler. But the fact that we've drawn these fish where we want them we should be able to catch them right underneath our feet still. It's just going to help us with that control. We're literally right off the end of the rod tip. I'm just going through with that line of bait. As you can see there, that's where the bites are. And there's quality down there as well. See the fish just coming through the water. And in this semi-clarity, it is the days where you expect Mr. Pike to come up. But hopefully that just shows by, you know, controlling your feeding, putting the bait where you want the fish to be. You can manipulate that shoal to help you with the conditions you're faced with. And today, them dates are just holding nicely off the rod tip, just down the peg. And if you look at that fish there, what a beautiful dace that is. So that does bring the video to an end and as you can see there in only a few hours on the river we've had plenty of bites and plenty of quality hopefully them hints and tips will help you out in your fishing to get out on the bank and give it a go thank you very much for watching it'd be great if you could like and subscribe down below